My prayers have been answered. Chivas have finally fired Luis Fernando Tena after failing to implement a sustainable style of play and making countless errors with the squad. Um, and now the heavy rumor is that Victor Manuel Bucetich is ready to take over at Chivas. I'm here with Danny. We're going to talk about that and our final reactions to Tena's terrible job here at Chivas and what we think about the new appointment. Um, Danny, how are you doing today, man? I'm great, man. Now, uh, now that the uh, appointment of Ustetich is looking closer and closer, uh, I'm excited. I'm happy that Tena's out of the door. As you said, he was unable to implement a, a style, really, at Chivas. Uh, so I think a lot of players uh, really couldn't grow and develop and show what their true talents under him. Uh, so I'm excited to have a coach like Vusa come in, who is a very balanced coach and someone who can really try and implement a style at Chivas for the first time in, I think, two to three years. So uh, yeah. I'm excited for that. It's crazy to think about the coaches that we've had since Almeida. Uh, Cardoso came in. He made a few mistakes. And then uh, it just got worse because next up was Boy, and he made even more mistakes. And then Tena came along, um, and at, originally I didn't know. I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, as I do with every coach. But it was uh, I quickly understood that uh, Tena is stuck on his ways, and he was refusing to learn from his mistakes. And even last season, when we picked up some some wins and we were in fifth place by the tenth jornada, I was still not convinced because I didn't see that we were actually playing uh, an attractive style, a, a style that would um, create chances. Um, and I thought that individualities were really what saved Tena. So all year, that's why I've been, you know, very vocal against um, Tena. And some of the mistakes that I would like to mention just to close off this chapter is the repeated mistakes of Tiba. Last season, I noticed it. And then this season, it just got worse. It seems like every game he gets a yellow card, right? What do you think about yeah. Tiba? Um, I I personally I um I'm a little soft on Thiba, man. I really liked him. Uh, I really like him ever since he came up, uh, and I thought he's done a great job. But lately, he's really been disappointing, as you said. Uh, uh -huh. His mistakes have gotten more reoccurring. So it's about every game that he gets a yellow card, but for about the same mistake, he uh, he lets someone get uh, someone gets behind him, and uh, he then has to foul them because Mier is not going to be able to catch up to him and pick up after his mistakes every single time. So I think Diba definitely has been making the same mistakes, and I think a guy like Tena is just letting these types of things slide. Um, yeah. When a guy like Vuse, or even if we go back to the days of Matias, uh, guys like that don't really let these things slide. Guys like that, they will put you on the bench after yeah. one or two times that you'd make the same mistake. Let's not forget that Vucetich and Almeida – or guys that will sit their big guys down and say, hey, this this is a problem. We saw that happen to Pulido a couple times uh, when he wasn't taking off with Chivas in the first couple games. Matias sat him down, and a coach shouldn't be afraid to do that. Um, it's his team. Um, I know the players are a big part, but the coach is the big guy, you know? He's the guy that makes these big decisions. So let's see if Usatich can come in and take care of these things because Diva had a lot of potential, man. I love Diva, but I want to see him grow and not – Punishing him uh, for these mistakes will not allow him to grow. It'll just keep him where he's at. Well, I stand by my claim that that um, from Twitter that Tena was ruining a lot of careers, and I would say Diva is one of those that, to be honest, I've seen these mistakes every time I've seen him play, but I do see some things like a, a coach should be able to detect those mistakes that a player is making and tell them how to fix it and change their style of play to suit the strengths of each player. So we saw Beltran doing poorly. We saw Tiba doing poorly. We saw Brizuela doing poorly. Everybody doing poorly because of the style that Ten Tena was trying to implement. And his biggest mistake, in my opinion, was that midfield of two. Every time it was two, and he refused to change from that style to DMs. And the worst example of it that we could ever have imagined was Gallito plus Molina. So I think ultimately that's the biggest mistake he made. And now talking a little bit more about Vuce, um, 
I it's not exactly my first choice. I wanted something more something newer, like something that a coach that maybe could come in and revolutionize things that nobody expected knows what to expect from him. But I understand that that's very difficult. So considering that, I do think Vucetich is the best possible choice that we could have made from within the league um, because he has a lot of experience in, in facing every single one of the coaches that um, is in, you know, every single one of the teams in this league. He know he has a good idea of how they're going to play. So that could be an advantage. Um, what do you think about Vuce's, like, career? And um, do you think, yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, I think I think that just his, like, um, just his, like, his trajectoria, man, like, just the el recorrido que ha tenido, you know, like, just the yeah. amount of teams that he's actually turned into, like, um, actual contenders is, is amazing to me. I, I remember the days in Monterrey. Monterrey was the was the team to not mess with because of Vucic. Yeah. Like, I mean, he lives up to his name. El Rey Midas, he really lives up to his name because he everything he touches, he makes into gold. He he wins chips. That's what he's there for. Like he's a guy that has a very balanced style of play. A lot of people are getting on uh Chivas for saying uh, for I mean for hiring him uh because he's just another defensive coach, but I mean, guys, like we have to look at the like the style of play. I don't think he's a defensive coach per se. I think he's more of a balanced guy. Uh, and me and you were talking about that earlier that he's more of a balanced coach. That he looks for balance in his team and not just hey, let's let's throw all these guys up there. Let's try and just push, 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 push for goals. Uh, let's not worry about the defense. It's going to get done either way. Um, I mean, that's attractive to a lot of people, and that's what a lot of us uh, hope for. But, I mean, let's remember that, that that's not always sustainable. Like, uh, I mean, not always will you have a team that will work out perfectly that way like uh, like we had in 2017. Like, I mean, Matias, he came in and revolutionized the team, but we have to realize that not everyone's going to be him. So, I mean, getting the best of the recyclable bunch – I mean, like Bucetich is, instead of getting Roman or Profe Cruz, I'm very happy with the hiring of Bucetich because he's a very good coach who knows the league and, more uh, importantly, knows how to win. I think he's great yeah. in the playoff system. Well, you can't, like, there's no comparison between Bucetich and Tena. Bucetich is 10 times the coach Tena is because it genuine, genuinely looked like Tena didn't really understand what was wrong with his side. And Vuce, at least, uh, you were talking about all his successes, and I do think that it's been a long time since he's been very relevant in Liga MX. He's, he's he's coached Querétaro twice. Those are his two most recent jobs. Uh, doing decently, for example, in... I have some numbers over here um, really quickly. In, in the clausura, I uh, know, in the apertura of last year, he had Querétaro in fourth place with nine wins, four draws, and five losses. And then before the season was canceled, he had Querétaro um, last season in in 12th spot. So not amazing. Four wins, two draws, and four losses. Um, I don't know. Like, if you think about the teams that are always competitive in this in this league, uh, America, uh, León, Tigres... Monterrey, if they were to look for a coach today, I don't know if any of them would actually choose Fusetich to, to, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, though. I'm not 100% sure. I and mean, that's really where I'm concerned. I don't I mean, know. A lot of these coaches in the recyclable bunch, as I said before, are, are about the same. Their tactics are the same. But I think what separates Fusetich from the bunch is the ability to kind of um, – take every last bit of talent out of that mm -hmm. player that he's or, or out of those players that group of players because i think guys like um i, I remember tito villa he was yeah. at the the back end of his career this That's guy a had a point, revolution you know? under vucetich and guy he was like i was like man is this even the same guy how did how that does was their only striker him? at the time that was their only striker if if, if el tito villa got injured uh, Bucetich said if he got injured he would he would have practi practically been screwed because um, there was that that was their only striker so they re he 
I, f- I do feel like he did a good job at Querétaro, considering everything, considering that his squad was weak all the time, pretty much. He did interesting things with young players, um, and that's what I like to see. That's what I think. Um, that's why I think Busit- That's why I rate Busetich, and I do think he is still, you know, a good coach. He's still relevant, but he's not. You know, the, my only concern again, I'm just repeating it, is that he hasn't really been competing for the title. And the last time he did was he took Querétaro to the final, which is an an amazing achievement in my opinion. But that was in 2015, I think. So with one of the best players in history, you know, man. <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot easier with him on there. Yeah, and, and he was, you know, he was willing to to sacrifice Ronaldinho for a system uh, at times or build a system around Ronaldinho. So he he is a, an in an intelligent coach. Um and I do think he will be good for the club. I think he's very smart and I think he will know I'm just waiting to see what he does straight off the bat because to me it's obvious the things that some of the things that need to happen. Diva needs to be benched in my opinion. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, along with changing that midfield, uh, you have to yeah. get more more people that know how to retain the ball and know how to create chances. I would say Dieter Villalbando must start, and Chofis. I would love to see him start, but. He, if anything, he should be very involved. You should be putting him in as a sub at the very least, in my opinion. So we'll see what he does. Uh, we also have to wait and see what uh, Mar- uh, Marcelo Micheleano does on Wednesday against Bravos. Um, I'm very interested. This is the first time in a long time I'm in- I'm actually interested to see what a coach is going to do because with Tena it was predictable every single time. Yeah, definitely. Um. It's exciting. It's exciting to think about what's going to happen. Honestly, uh, I think we have a lot of players that um, that need a coach like Busetich, um, especially Chofis. I, I I really rate Chofis, um, but I'm I'm really thinking that a a lot of us are really kind of to our to our fucking our peak mm-hmm. of defending Chofis for what what he's kind of doing at this point. You know, uh, I yeah, think it's reached the level. To me, that, it's off the field. It, yeah. Strictly off the field things. You know, sometimes there's pictures of him doing stuff. Today, something came out of Chicote. I'm critical of that. But on the field, I do believe the uh, Chofis and Chicote, they just do what they know how to do. It's up to the coach. Yeah. I blame the coach more than anything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I do agree with you there. I'm going to close it off because we're going a little long already. But uh, just to just to close it off, I just want to repeat I think Busetich is a pretty good choice. I think he'll do decently. The expectations are still very high, and I don't know if he'll be able to meet them. My expectation is top four and at least semifinals, but I know that's extremely difficult to achieve. And but there's no excuses, you know. Tena is, he, I mean, Tena made a mess. Busetich is signing, knowing that he has to clean up that mess. There's no. I'm gonna be just as hard on Busetich as I was on Tena. Um, even more so because I actually expect something from Buzetich. Yeah. Um, any closing statements from you? Um, I, th- I think we should uh, definitely give him time. Um, let's just give him time because yeah. he's not going to be able to do what uh, what other coach were, coaches were able to do uh, because he didn't have a preseason. Yeah. yeah. I mean, most teams didn't have much of a preseason, but, I mean, Buzetich is going to come in. We're not going to see his impact for a couple of jornadas. Yeah. So let's give him some time. Um, and let's get excited, guys, because honestly, this is a guy that knows how to win. Like, I actually trust we'll see. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I actually trust that he's a smart dude, unlike Dana. Anyway, yeah. all right. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Follow us on our Twitters. They'll be down in the description below.